Hello everyone, welcome, my name is Ajay Pestridge, welcome to another P3D video, and today we're talking about version 6. It's finally released, it's finally here, and uh, there's a lot of changes, and uh, if you're looking to get your uh, add-ons from FSX and P3D versions 1 to 5 into version 6, um, then this is the video that's going to show you exactly how to do that. I'll be covering quite a lot. So stick with me and uh, we'll get to it. So we first want to say that version 6, um, there's a lot of changes. There's a new graphical weather atmospheric, completely different from version 5. Um, new lighting and shaders, completely different from version 5, which means the textures and models and everything from your previous add-ons will need uh, a total revamp, to be honest. Um, and because of the 8K resolution support for version 6, you know, a lot of the models could literally be redone and given more extreme detail than they have before from uh, developers. So uh, a lot of updates or a lot of redoings for specific version 6 could be done by developers. Um, like I said, there's a lot of change in V6. All the textures have been updated to high resolution. They have have inserted and made more models, you know, sim objects. And uh, there's a lot of refinements and there's way loads, like loads of performance tweaks under the hood. But um, the devs have come out and they've kind of made their intentions known in one of three ways, um, depending. And uh, basically some devs have said, listen, and we're we're dropping support at all completely um, we're not developing anything for the future of p3d where we won't even be supporting the, your the back history of what we've done and we're focusing solely on Microsoft moving forward um, other developers have come out and stated that um, well we're working quite uh, focusing right now on Microsoft Flight Sim and once we've done that we will shift back to P3D and sort of assess the market and see if it's viable to, or if there's enough people uh, which there is to bring uh, our products over and we will look at it at a later date and then there's other developers who've come out and said yes we fully support P3D and we will update our products and we will issue new installers as well as Microsoft Flight Sim and X-Plane so it's, it's a bit of a mixed bag with developers which leaves the mic the p3d users sort of in a state of well you know am i going to get to use my previous add-ons in you know the the current now version of p3d and to be honest that's always plagued p3d you know there's been a lot of add-ons from the past um which have kind of been lost to history just because the developer either has gone awol passed away just stopped developing or uh, you know for whatever reason has not updated um, luckily you know depending on the way the add-on was made some still do work without even a single update others if they've been made very very technically in a certain way like the aerosoft airbus series the professional ones just they full stopped stopped working at all now like they don't even work in version 5 the last update they had was in 2021 and they worked in version 5 just fine in fact they worked in my p3d v5 last year just fine and suddenly in the last month or two months when i've tried to access them they're unusable in version 5 let alone version 6 so I don't know why that's happened suddenly, but um, it's such a shame because it's like that's the only Airbus ones I have. I don't have the FS Labs, and even then, FS Labs have stated, you know, we don't know if we'll update in the future or not. So it's like a big question mark for Airbus lovers for P3D. Like there might not be any Airbus planes flying, um, which is a bit like, hmm, why not? Like why is Airbus getting the, you know, specifically? Anyway, how are we going to do this? So. Uh, I'm going to literally show you how you can install using official installers only um, into P3D V6. Now, first off, disclaimer, I always recommend waiting for the third party developer to bring out an official update and an official installer for P3D V6. That's my stance. Um, I'm showing this basically as a gesture uh, to help people of well if you can't wait if you have to have it now there is an alternative and it's actually like in Orbex's case a preferred way 
than what Orbex are telling you to do. There's a developer over on Absim from Orbex who is sort of, or rather not on Absim, but on the Orbex forums that was shared with Absim. And he's stating that there is a certain way you need to update your add-ons, which actually will corrupt your P3D installation in the future and lock you out of your simulator if you follow his guidelines. Um, my way will not do that. It will manage you'll be able to manage your uh, p3d installation and senior library and it will stay clean moving forward so we'll get to that um so today we're focusing mainly on orbex and pmdg because like orbex haven't actually stated if they're updating or not like by the time i finish filming and editing and publishing this video they might have already released the version 6 installers you know so this video is kind of pointless for orbex um they haven't given a timeline or even announcement if they're even going to so as of recording this video so it's a big fat question mark so i'll do this video which i was kind of hesitant on because i'm pretty sure they will um, i was kind of hesitant on doing it um, in case they suddenly brought out a thing but in tech terms of pmdg they've stated that they're going to wait until after their 747 is released in microsoft then they'll have a look at p3d see if there's enough customers update the products accordingly so that's a question mark. It's a question mark with FS Labs. It's a question mark with a lot of airport developers. It's a question mark, like, with a lot of developers. We know, like, A2A, it's a question mark. We know kind of where we're looking at with some developers, like UK2000, Aerosoft, um, Milviz, Airplane Heaven. They flat out just basically said we've left P3D, you know? Some of them have just said, here, you can have all our history for free. Um, others have literally like it seems locked off their products for some reason um and they've literally gone to microsoft so which is sad state really because it means p3d users which there are many of are losing their add-ons so how do we get our add-ons into v6 well it it's pretty easy in a straightforward way but it's got a few steps which are complicated so i'll explain it very slowly and as best as i can um like i said in orbex's case they've stated um that you know th there is a certain way that you need to put your add-ons uh, into version 6 from version 5 using the xml method by copying and pasting entries in the add-on cfg file and you have to reorder them yourself and then you need to rename a few files and they will show up in v6 and that is true the problem with that is first off you could only have the xml add-ons which means you have to xml every product from orbex and sadly global regional and true worth items need to actually be in your scenery library in order for other add-ons like night lighting or sometimes airports to access the cfg with the information contained in it about those landscape items and if they're not in that, that cfg file then there might not be compatibility for night lighting and some airports that have huge landscapes and land class uh, data you know and, and none of it is written to the to the to the actual terrain file which he actually suggests you copy from five into six so if six's la terrain file has changed then you're removing a lot of functionality from v6 by putting v5's terrain file in so uh it's kind of like ugh, you know plus also not only that um xml's are very locked to a priority and they don't move um, and then your scenery will move around it so as you install more items into your scenery library your scenery library is eventually going to get so messy it will not load and it will lock out and you're left you're going to be literally left with no sim to fly because you can't turn to orbex central to manage your scenery library um, because you've just popped in entries from an xml um at linking your version 5 you know files uh essentially um you haven't got like a dedicated version 6 version so you basically can't fix a corruption from orbex central which you can with my way so he's literally showing you how you can destroy your sim in the future which is why i don't get why he's showing that way so this way um you can have it in the scenery library or an add-on xml um you can manage it with orbex central you can update it with orbex central and uh you can future proof the safety of your sim um, like i said we're going to be focusing on orbex pmdg and then a few other easy installers as well um so let's get straight to it first off there's some prep uh 
sec like the second disclaimer as well is you need a licensed copy of p3d like i don't endorse piracy there's no cracks there's no hidden codes there's no like if you don't own the license then you you shouldn't really be doing this i don't really recommend either this way i again recommend proper installers but like i said there is a way if you can't wait but you do need to have the license copy um you know in your possession but it can't be installed on the pc so whichever way we go here you're going to make a decision on which route you're going to go down now personally i have v5 still on my system so i can't use the add-ons from v5 and put them into v6 because orbex will not install v5 installations that already exist on my sim into another sim i have to literally select a separate simulator so i'm using v4 now of course on the flip side if you've got v4 on already on your system you can use v5 if you have it to put it into v6 um, at the end of the day v6 actually has got legacy sort of exclusional code for non-PBR items to kind of like work as intended, although they won't have the precipitation effects applied to them, they will show up in the sim and kind of mix with the sim without standing out and looking weird. Um, not so true of V5 though, that actually has got specific PBR with True Sky, and the add-ons will sort of have been, if they were made correctly, integrated to that version. So they will actually stand out and look a little bit more weird than version four ones will. But of course, P3D V5 versions will have more accurate nav data in version 6 as opposed to ones from V4. So you really got to decide which one are you going to use to put into 6, P3D V4 or P3D V5. Either way, whichever one you decide, the process is exactly the same. So um, I've chosen P3D V4. So the first thing you need to do is make some folders and literally right click, go to new, folder and call it whichever p3d ghost copy you're going to create and call it the same thing so i've called it p prepared 3d v4 and you do that for program data which you can find on your c drive uh lockheed martin and then you'll find your other versions here uh program files same thing c drive program files lockheed martin and create your ghosted copy here and then go and you need to create a library for orbex so unless this can be on any single drive you wish so i've put it here uh, on my uh, drive i've called it orbex 6 just so i know exactly what which one it is and then that's that you don't have to put any of these folders in um, just create the the actual folder itself now in your program data section go into p3d v6 and basically you want to control a and highlight everything and control c and copy every file here and paste it into your ghosted copy so all of these files are from v6 then you want to go into your program files and scroll down until all you see all the dll's and just right click and copy all of these dll's there and copy and pop them into your ghosted copy as well sometimes an installer will look for an exe in the pathway to the folder um, before it'll actually install um, or it might even make use of these dll's so it's best to have these in as well um, and once you've done that, you've pretty much done a little bit of the initial setup. Now we actually need to create a version of prepared on your system for the installers to recognize, yes, this person has got prepared version whatever on their system. So what you want to do is open up your menu down here, type in reg. Um, that doesn't mean we're going to look for Elton John. Uh, click run as administrator, and this is your registry editor. Now, if you don't know what you're doing here, I advise you not to do this because at the end of the day, you could destroy your PC if you do it wrong. Um, but if you do follow along and you do exactly as I do, it's totally safe and you don't actually have to restart your PC. So um, there's two locations here that we're going to manipulate uh, and add our P3D copy uh, licensed copy that we've purchased um in so we've got current user and local machines they're the two most places that most installers will look for in your registry to confirm you have a licensed copy so first time we're going to go current user 
drop down, you want to go to software, drop it down and scroll down to Lockheed Martin. And you want to look for your versions. Now, as you can see, I've got versions 3, 4, 5, and 6. I don't actually have version 2, so I don't know why that's there. But I have got a copy of version 3. I have got a copy of version 5. And I've got a copy of version 6. What you want to do is right-click on Lockheed Martin, go to New, and go to Key. And it's going to create a box where you're going to type in the actual prepared version whatever it happens to be so in this case it's number four and exactly the same wording as used by six uh, and as you can see in six here it says i've got it installed there is the location of the pathway and and that's it so what we want to do is we want to copy this information into our version four so basically go into your prepared ghost copy that you're creating you want to right click go to new and go to string value and it's going to put this in here with the red lettering next to it you want to call it app path and then wherever your version 6 is sitting so i've got mine sitting on my program files you want to highlight the address Control c in order to copy this address to the clipboard and then come over here where this app path you've created double click on that and paste it into there and that is now telling your installer that you have p3d v4 and the location can be found here now you need to tell it that it's actually installed on your system so we go back down to the blank space here go to new go to keyword 64 bit value and it will create a new value here in the blue lettering and you want to make sure you type in the word installed double click that change the zero to a one and now you've created an installed copy in your registry um, for version four that will point towards version six now you can also set do a setup path sometimes they look for the word setup path as well uh, just to sort of back yourself up there and once you've done that you have finished in this section so you can close down your current user and now you need to go down to the local machine and basically do exactly the same thing. Look for software, scroll down to Lockheed Martin and look for your version four. Now, as you can see, the, there's an extra version, an extra one here called license. Now, some installers may look for, have you got this license versus that license? So I would recommend putting the app path and the setup path in this one in exactly the same way as we did before. So click on Lockheed Martin, right click, go to new key, type in the name, create the folder for your ghosted copy. And then in this blank section, you want to go to new, you want to go to string value, you want to type app path and setup path is, you know, two separate entries. And then you want to paste in the pathway to your version 6 folder. Then you want to go to installed, new, keyword 64-bit value, and write installed, double-click on that, and type 1. Um, and once you've done that, you've finished basically creating your copy. Now, again, license, that's the new string value. And, you know, if you've bought the personal license or if you bought the professional license, you want to type in that word there now once you've done that you can close your registry you don't even need to restart your pc to be honest but if orbex doesn't pick it up initially then i would say restart your pc but you shouldn't have to that's all the hardest setup done now it's completely easy street so first things first is load up orbex and um, what we're going to do is we need to create a library first linked to version 6 so there's two ways orbex central uh, installs into your flight sim it uses the xml method and then it installs straight into the root folder of your simulator like i said before i highly recommend if it is a scenery item let me just load up version 6 here because remember my ghost copy is the version 4 so that means version 6 um, if it's a scenery item in terms of its if it's from the global range of products if it's from the regional range of products or if it's from the true worth range of products they all need to be installed as a scenery library item not an xml so as you can see here it says the address for my version 6 now if it is a city or an airport 
they can sit on top of your scenery library and sit on top of the landscape and they are self-contained so they really don't need to worry about lighting or anything like that from other add-ons so they can be in a library on their own and as you can see here it's installed into p3d v6 so let's go set up our library first and then i will show you how to install this so the gear icon up here once you've selected it should recognize that you've got your ghost ghosted copy on there um, Go to the gear icon, go to libraries, and you want to create new library. Now, I've called mine P3D version 6, just so it shows P3D version 6 once it's installed. Um, and then, of course, I've given it the location of that library folder location that I did before. Okay. Once you put this pathway in and click save, it will create a P3D v4 folder within okay and then inside that is all the xml add-ons that you're going to install now when orbex central installs as an xml add-on it will automatically write itself if we go down to uh program data the add-on cfg file it will automatically update this file you don't have to update it yourself and it will already be ordered in the correct numbered in terms of the packages so you don't have to do anything here that is automatically done for you if you install it as a scenery item so which is not using these libraries then you actually need to update that information yourself so if you go into your program data location for version 6 and scroll down there is a scenery file and a terrain file here now i highly recommend taking your original which by the way you have to have p3d version 6 installed on your pc before you start all this um, but i highly recommend taking the original cfg file and the terrain file and creating a backup copy of each not because you're going to mess up or anything like that but at least you have got a backup copy to fall back onto should you want to recall your default simulator ever again um, so once you've created your backup copy obviously before we actually did move all of our for you know files in here so in the ghosted copy of p3d you've got your uh scenery file and your terrain file these should be the default before you've installed anything now if you install for a scenery item it's going to orbex central will update your ghosted copy cfg files and basically once you've finished installing everything for orbex you're going to need to copy these two files and paste them into v6 yourself to update version 6's version of those files and then you'll all your add-ons are linked into your sim in the scenery library straight away okay so first things first now installation i actually had to install a add-on xml first then i had to uninstall it and install it as a scenery lighty uh, scenery library item first because if you try and install uh, a, a scenery item bef like f as your first installation i'm not sure if orbex central picks it up because i had an error when i first tried to install the base pack as a scenery item it would like it wouldn't work i had to install it first as an xml then it worked uninstall it as uh, xml and then reinstall it as a scenery library item that might have been specific to me though so um, i would say start with the region start with australia v2 um, and put that one in your scenery library you literally just run through the installer as normal there is nothing now that has changed um, from your, running your, your installation once you've run the installation it will show exactly like this underneath if you've done it exactly correctly verify your files so that way you make sure that every single file is in there you can even configure it the way you want to and it will be configured to however you use um, and then run through the global sections that you want, wish to install the global section the regional section all must be installed as a scenery library item now when i say must be 
I don't mean it's like they can't be installed as an XML because they can, but to have a clean running simulator, P3D really is designed for scenery library items for landscape items. So your night lighting and your other add-ons can find those location, uh, those add-ons and uh, mix the appropriate files. Add-on XMLs do not get written to like terrain file or other files scenery library items do so if there is land classification that needs to be written to the terrain file it won't get updated as a xml and it won't work as intended okay now i recommend installing orbex all in one go like it might take a long time but it'll be totally worth it because once you've installed everything you need okay you need to go to the gear icon up here Go to your insertion point, and this is why you must have already purchased and at least flown um, P3D V6 at least once first. Go into your uh, inserted below point here, and you want to scroll down until you find the default sim. So it will be, it'll say like Randolph AFB or something. And we want to scroll down. I've got a lot, so I'll, I'll scroll in for years here. Here we go. Uh, this is all default, so this is what you're looking for. Randolph AFB. Whatever is above it, you want to click that. And now your sim, uh, Orbex Central, will organize all your Orbex add-ons within your scenery library. Okay? And arrange them correctly so it will actually fly appropriately when you're in the sim. Um, there is a certain order that your scenery library has to be in. They, it has been adjusted successfully, so that is that. I can now shut down Orbex Central. We are finished with it. The good thing, as I said, about doing it my way here is that in the future, it will still be managed by Orbex Central. So you can actually still use all the configurator options and the library manager uh, as well. All you need to do once you've done your Orbex installation is go into v the, your ghosted copy and copy across the scenery file and the terrain file and put them into V6 and you're done, okay? Uh, you can then open up your V6 and everything from Orbex that you've just installed, however long it's taken you, will show up. Now you might have to okay a few add-ons here and that's when they get written to the add-on CFG. Um, in your library uh, now if you if you want to build it up over time and just do a little bit at a time you're gonna have to be copying back and forth quite a lot anytime you install a new add-on or anytime you uh, move anything in your senior library in terms of ticking or unticking you need to go into your p3d v6 program data location take that terrain file take that scenery file copy it and place it back into your version ghosted copy. So Orbex Central has up-to-date information. So when you do load your sim up next time, you haven't lost all your changes or installation links that you just made. Um, that's very important as well. Uh, so that's Orbex done, guys. Orbex is done and out of the way. PMDG time. PMDG is so simple, you'd literally just run the installer. You run the installer, you tick both options for P3D version 4 and 5, you put your activated key in as normal when it pops up and asks. You can have a version 4 and a version 5 uh, PMDG airplane sitting on the same uh, PC, uh, both activated. Um, and you basically just any installer made for, for four or five, you just run as normal. Now, some installers give you the option where you can point that uh, that installation to. That's great because all you do is point it to V6 and it'll install just the same. So Carinado, uh, some A2As, you literally um, can just point and, and click and, and that's that. If you've purchased a2A planes in P3D V5, um, which I have here, as you can see, um, they're all self-contained. They all already sit within their own SimObjects Airplanes folder. All you have to do is copy the A2A and the Accu feel if you own that too. Just copy these two files from P3D 5 add-ons and paste them into P3D V6, as you see here. And they will work 
absolutely as intended. I think I can actually delete this now. We don't need that one. Um, sadly, the Aerosoft, these planes do not work whatsoever in V6. They don't even work in V5 anymore, and I don't know why. Uh, GSX has already had a installation manager for uh, V6, so they already work. You don't have to fiddle with them. There is an FSUI PC already made available. Navigraph Simlink has been made available. Uh, Active Sky have made their V6. It's compatible now. Um, there's a lot of people who have done updates already um aig again if you own aig you literally just copy uh these three files from v5 and paste them into v6 um because they're all literally just um links to your actual installation um same with anything that just literally has a uh an add-on XML in like Evan Sound, I've literally copy and pasted, and they all work as well. Uh, if you have an XML item, you literally just can drop it in to the uh, library, and it will work. So I have all these airports here from Simwings. They're just XMLs. That's all they are. I've basically XML all my all my airports as much as I can, and I store them completely on another drive and uh this way i'm future proofing myself so you go to airports and oh, you go to airports and these are all my airports here fly tampas are in their own section you know basically everything is here um and it's just linked through an xml i've done a video on how to do that it's very easy everything in here I've tested it works it's fine you know it's because i'm literally dragging just the file uh, of the XML file and literally you know if I want to put let's say Bandung in I literally just go into my P3D v6 add-ons folder and I'll literally just drag it across like this done now that is in even though it's just an XML file and it will show up in the sim and work um, and that's pretty much it it's so easy to be honest. Uh, I don't know why there's so many people complaining uh, online um, about this doesn't work, that doesn't work. PMDG planes, they all work. Uh, there is no problem whatsoever with any of them. Um, I load one up now, in fact, and show you. Uh, 747, we'll just go to the local uh, Washington thing. And um, yeah, PMDG planes all work, as does the FMC. The uh, Orbex airports and regions and Trueworth, they all work. Oh yeah, another thing I forgot. I forgot to mention in this in my live stream, by the way, um, which is very important for in order to get your autogen buildings and trees to show. Um, if you've installed the Orbex libraries in uh, your library, you know, XML library, Go find that folder that says Orbex Libraries, wherever it may be. I've actually put mine in the root sim of the folder. So when you install it into Orbex, the root sim of the folder, I believe it goes into scripts. Yep. Uh, then you need, um, but if you've installed it as an XML item, it will be in your Orbex libs folder under scripts. Um, then go into custom GB base and you'll find these two uh, files here. Uh, one that says autogen descriptions and another that says autogen uh, auto gen descriptions legacy. And in the sim root of the folder, you'll have exactly the same thing. You'll have auto descriptions and then there'll be another one called auto descriptions legacy. You need to take the one that says autogen descriptions, add the word original or ridge or off, whatever, to the end of it to disable that file in both locations okay as you can see here i've done it in both locations then take the one that says uh legacy and remove the word legacy from it so you are only left with these two full uh, files um, and it's the same in here the one that says legacy remove the word legacy so it just says autogen descriptions um, that will enable your trees and buildings to show up inside your sim now if you want more trees by the way to show up inside your sim um, i've got an upcoming pack that will actually be uh, compatible with v6 as well um, which actually batches in way more trees 
um, than the original uh, default sim will allow. And it doesn't matter what setting you have your auto gen set to, this will apply to all. So all you need to do, if I just go down, scroll down in your P3D CFG file, and here, basically put these two um, lines of code in, uh, terrain max autogen trees per cell and autogen buildings per cell 6,000 that actually increases the amount of uh, autogen trees and buildings will show up in your simulator so it'll actually give you a much more richer filler a uh, fuller um, landscape than if you didn't have that in right so here is the 747 and as you can see all displays are working uh, just fine um, nothing actually is wrong here. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, I've seen a lot of people basically saying on forums, like, oh, this don't work, that don't work. It actually does. It does work, you know. And it looks great, to be honest. It looks fantastic, you know. As does the simulator, you know. I think, like, P3D have done a great job here. Like, not only have we got a live weather engine, now, Rex Skyforce also works with um, P3D V6. Active Sky have brought out their version 6 beta, so you could, you know, look at it and sort of have a, have a look at it, see if it's something you like. Um, both Skyforce and Active Sky work uh, in version 6. Uh, they both change the weather, um, and they both look fantastic when they do. So, like, pfft, yeah. There's, there's literally no reason if you're a P3D lover not to upgrade to version 6. But basically, that's it, guys. That's how you get in all your previous add-ons from the past. Um, I did do this during my live stream, but at the end of the day, I forgot to show you that autogen one. So um, that's it. That's everything. Um, all the installers will just run like before. You literally just run them as normal. And if it gives you the option, you can point it in the direction of version six and it will install into the root sim of your folder as normal. And if it doesn't give you the option, just choose your ghosted copy of whichever simulator that you used and it will install into version six as normal. And that's it, nice and easy and Orbex Central and the PMDG Op Center will both update your products do put in the liveries as normal as intended and the planes will work as well uh you know what let's go for a flight guys let's go for a flight let's get this one in the air here we go Rock and roll! We're we not going forward, like yeah. There you go. Go forward. You now this plane's a bit like. Oh, you can't even hear it, can you? I can't even hear it. I better look up as well. Or we're gonna run our runway. Why can't I hear it? Oh, because I turned the sound off, didn't I? Boom. Oh, yeah. Let's go, boys. Rotation. Oh, she's alive. She's up. Oh, mate. Tail strike. We've shit out. Total shit out. <laughs> oh, we fucked up, boys. Get her in the air. Come on. Queen, fly. <laughs> you fucking whore. Oh, man, she won't take off. She's too fat. Get in the air, bitch. Come on. What the fuck is wrong with this plane? There we go. She's up. And she's down. Come on, girl. Fly. There we go. We got her. We got this puppy. We got this puppy. 
Boom! Let's go. Take it to the air, boys. There we go. She's flying. Boom. Let's get Rex Skyforce involved. Uh, FSX actions. Hang on. Fuel. Make sure we got enough fuel. We're a long range. There we go. Uh, menu. Hang on. Better sort that out later. She's going. We didn't even put any landing lights on. Get those lights on. The overhead panel lit. Glare shield. Oh shit. <laughs> I haven't set this plane up, by the way, to be used, <laughs> right, for, you know, flight purposes. So that's why we've got, like, four frames. If I actually set this thing up to, uh, you know, fly, then. But we're still getting about 30 frames, so that's good enough for me. Look at that. Look at that, boys and girls. I mean, I've just cleared the weather, so Rex will uh, re-inject the weather. So we get uh, refresh. Rex will now inject its weather. There we go, Rex has started its injection. There we go, look at that. Oh, by the way, what you're seeing down below is just Orbex Global, Vector, and Land Class. That's it. Not too bad. Look at the PBR makes it look like these are real. Like, I think. Brilliant. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, I do a giveaway on my channel. Every month I give away 50 euros of Sim Market vouchers. To be in with a chance, leave a comment down below. Put a subscription on this channel. And at the end of every month, I go live with a vlog. I announce the winner and send your vouchers out to you. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye!